who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.
Thank you, Lord, for being so, so good to us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that in your name we are healed.
Father, we glorify you. Thank you so much, O Lord Jesus Christ, for your presence, for your love, for your faithfulness towards each and every one of us, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. We thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, that we can be so bold to say things like, I am blessed. We, we can say things like, I am called. Back in my day when I was in a, another school, another religion would say that that sort of wording, that sort of verbiage, I am blessed, I am called, I am healed in Jesus' name. Now, those sorts of words were, were considered sins in other religions. In other words, what they were saying in these religions were, ang kapal naman ng mukha mo. Ang kapal mo naman makasabi na you are blessed. Ang kapal mo naman, how could you say that you are whole? How could you bless, how could you say that you are healed? Well, that's what we're celebrating and that's what we keep on celebrating. Ah, that's what we keep on celebrating uh, every time. Ano? There was a time na nagsa-celebrate lang po kami ng communion every first Sunday of the month. But, because of, um, siguro, na-reveal lang po kay Pastor Oscar na it'll be very helpful for us to celebrate this not just once every month, but every week. Because we do need the reminder of the confidence behind us saying that we are blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved by God. And what is that? It's because of this. Jesus Christ, the body that He laid down for us, the blood that He shed for each and every one of us, so let me go ahead and just read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and onwards. It says here, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered for you, to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus Christ that we can say that we are blessed because so much has been taken from you. We can say that we are healed because so much has been afflicted upon you. It's, it was all in your body that you chose freely to lay down for each and every one of us. And despite of everything that's going on in our bodies and minds, we receive that healing and that peace today. We remember you, O Lord Jesus Christ, and the body that you laid down for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and eat, and you guys watching online, you can eat, us, eat with us as well. I mean, I'd like to eat, but yeah. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving us Jesus. And not only have we received the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have also received his blood. It is important for us to always remember your blood, the Lord Jesus Christ, because without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. And while the blood of bulls and goats can consider our forgiveness for a season, we thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, that by your blood, we can proclaim that we are forgiven, not just yesterday, not today, not just, for, not just in the future, but forevermore. Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, because by your blood, you have, you have proclaimed forgiveness for all of our sins, now and forever. And for this, O Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We remember the blood that you shed today. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and drink, guys. So brethren, just go ahead and receive that blessing. You are blessed. You are called. You are healed. You are whole and you are saved, not because of what you've done, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a clap in this place? Come on. Amen. 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 And uh, yeah, for you guys here, um, we have something for the kids. Go ahead and follow. Despite all that's going on, Lord Jesus, it's so tough. It's so hard for us to stay focused on its own. But we're just so thankful, O oh Lord Jesus, that we can still celebrate these times. We can have these times, not only physically, but in our, in our online services, 
to remember right now once a week how good you are and how great you are in spite of everything that's going on. So minister to our hearts, minister to our minds, minister to the families that we represent today. We would go ahead and call out to the Lord and we would go ahead and call out and say, God, forgive us for our sins. And it's kind of implying, it's, these people are sort of implying that because of our sin, it work. Are you guys ready to go down this journey with me? So let's go to Philippians. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Because look at it. I mean, like, it says here, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, right? Hello? You guys with me? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, verse 7 says, have this among yourselves. Have this mind among yourselves. Take note, this is Paul's letter to the Philippians after Jesus Christ's birth, death, resurrection, and ascension, all right? Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men. So it wasn't enough, my friends. Here's the thing. Christ being born as one of us was already very humbling to him. Imagine a God who is infinite and eternal. No limits, no beginning, no end. He was with us forever and he will continue to be with us forever. Consider that same God choosing to be born as one of us within the bounds of time and within the bounds of space. That in itself, the very act of Christ being born as one of us was already humbling enough for, G for God and for Jesus Christ. But not only that, guess what? It keeps on going here because it says here, and being found in human form, take note, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death. Here, even death on a cross. Imagine this, guys. You are naked, fully naked, and you guys were badly beaten and nailed to a cross. It's not enough that you die. It's not humiliating enough for someone to die but in Christ's case, it was double humiliating for him to be nailed to a cross for all the world to see. He was dying. That was humbling enough. But in his dying, in his last moments, he was being ridiculed. He was being jeered at. And he was being looked at with pity. So what am I trying to say here? The word says, the verse says, if we humble ourselves... I would have us consider that before we go ahead and even try to humble ourselves, let's go ahead and understand that Christ, before we were even born, Christ lay his life down for us. He humbled himself for each and every one of us. Christ humbled himself. What else did it, does it say here? If my people, they pray, if they humble themselves and if they pray and seek my face... For this, let's go ahead and look at let's let's go ahead and look at Romans chapter five verses six to eight, and let me read it for us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows His love for us. Take note: God shows His love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because of the finished work of Christ, we can rest. Why can we rest? Because instead of us seeking His face, it was God who sought us first while we were yet sinners, meaning while we weren't even looking at Him, while we were already suffering the, 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 the pain of this world, and while that was keeping us busy, we had no time to go ahead and look for God. It was God who sought us first. Before we even had the idea of seeking His face, it was God who sought us first. And how do we know this? Because He sent, once again, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, not only to be born as one of us, but to give His life for each and every one of us. We can rest from seeking, knowing that God sought us first. Hello? Hello? So if you're thinking to yourselves that you want to humble yourselves, if you think to yourselves that you can go ahead and call out to God, remember before any of that ever even happens in your life, praise God because it was Christ who humbled himself first. 
and it was God who sought you and He looked for you. You, yes, you first. Hello? And finally, it says here, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You see here, I, while I keep going down this road, it, it just seems right, you know? It feels so right for, for us. Like say, for example, when we look at everything that's happening in this world, it seems so right for us to go ahead and do these things, to humble ourselves, to cry out to the Lord. It seems so right for us, from, for us to repent from our wicked ways, and that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything against, I mean, I'm not saying anything against these things. What I'm saying is that, let me just remind you guys, what I'm saying is that the motivation be behind us trying to seek the Lord during these times of trial, whether it be trial in the world, in, in the world point of view in, or in our own personal lives, the motivation behind this is, yes, again, number one, we humble ourselves because Christ humbled himself first. We pray and we seek the Lord because he sought us first. And friends, what I'm about to go ahead and say here is that we turn away from our sins. We turn away from our wicked ways because it was Christ who took us away from our wicked ways in the first place. It's not up to us. It's Christ who did it first. And all we're doing is remembering and all we're doing is celebrating. And that's why we can have rest even during these times that the world tries to test us and even during these times that the world tries to trouble us with everything that's going on around the world. Chapter 5, verse 21. And also, let me go ahead and also read Psalm 103, verse 12. What does it say here? For, I, for our sake, He made Him, who is Jesus. God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And Psalm 103 verse 12 reads, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. What am I trying to say here, friends? You know, I like to keep on saying, habang nagsa-celebrate po tayo ng communion, ano po yung lagi kong sinasabi? It's not just that Christ took away our sins, but I keep quoting this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, because it says here, He did not just take our sins, but Christ Himself, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who is to take away all of our sins. What did He do? He became sin for us. He did not just take it away from us, but He became sin. And so when He died, the sin died with Him. And so when He rose again, we could also go ahead and declare ourselves righteous unto eternal life. That's the only reason that we can go ahead and say that we are blessed is because He rose from the dead. But before any of that ever even happened, He laid down His life. He became our sin. That problem of sin in our lives had to be addressed before we could go ahead and call ourselves righteous. So what he did was he became sin, and when he died, automatic, ano po yung nangyari? Any sin, any, any, any desire that we have to sin, any of that stuff that we used to be so good at, all of that sin that we were so good at has been not only taken away from us, but guess what? It has been separated from us as the East is from the West. Friends, is there ever a time that, uh, the, that the East and the West can ever be united? No. That's how it is with sin for each and every one of us. You may miss sin. Baka mamiss mong magkasala, di ba? Okay lang naman. But the thing about it is, if you go back, here's the thing. If you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you know for a fact that He has saved you, even if you go ahead and try to sin, it's not gonna feel the same. Because friends, once you were built for sin, but now because of the Lord Jesus Christ rising from the dead and making you a new creation, hindi na po bagay sa inyo mag... Magkasala. It's no longer your nature to sin. That's how far sin has been separated from you. So when, you, when we go back to that verse where it says there for us to go ahead and humble ourselves, to pray to the Lord, and to go ahead and turn away from our sins, we can rest assured knowing that Jesus Christ did all the, the, the really hard work for each and every one of us. And all that we can do now is just to go ahead and rest 
In everything that is happening in our lives, we can find time to rest. Why can we rest? Because it was Christ who humbled himself. Why can we rest? Because it was Christ who reached out for us and, and looked for us and sought us. And why can we rest? It's because Christ has done all the work for us that sin can be totally separated from us and we can go ahead and not only call ourselves righteous, but we can go back to that song again and sing that we are blessed, we are called, we are healed, we are whole, we are saved in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. How good and how great the Lord is, amen? And here's the thing. I, I could stop there. I could stop there. No? But here's the thing. I want to keep on going here. Okay lang po ba? Because the verse doesn't stop there. Ano po yung, let me read the second half of 2 Chronicles verse seven, four, uh, chapter 7, verse 14. It says here, Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Right? So, what, what, it's, what, what are we saying here? What are we saying? It's saying, if, let me just read the whole verse again. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, we, we've established that Christ did all that. What are the benefits? Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Friends, it's no accident that these, these words were brought together like this. Now, God never does in any accidents. But here's the thing. Let me go, let's just go ahead and go from reverse here. Because let's go ahead and just look at the three things that God will do. God will heal our land, God will forgive our sins, and God will hear from heaven. Are you guys, guys with me so far? Let me just say that again. God will heal our land, God will forgive our sins, and God will hear from heaven. Now, let me go ahead and just say this. Before we can go ahead and heal our land, before we ourselves can go ahead and heal our land, how effective can we be if we, dar- if we aren't healed ourselves? Kung, kung, if, if we're trying to, like, say, for example, if I'm trying to help my aces, if I'm, I'm trying to help my team, how could I help them if I can't even think about helping myself? Diba? I'm just going to try to heal myself. I'm just trying, I mean, I may, I may try to go ahead and help them without helping myself. And any help that I give them will be very ineffective because sooner or later, baka mamamatay na lang ako. Here's the thing there. Before, before the land has to be healed, we ourselves have to be healed. Are you guys with me so far? Let me say that again. Before our land can be healed of anything, we ourselves have to be healed. And how does He heal us? Let me go ahead and stri- go straight there. How does, he, how does Jesus Christ heal us? He heals us by forgiving our sins. Before anything else that we are afflicted with in this world, before anything else that we are, we are sick with in this world, we have to remember that the one thing that we are all sick with in this world is sin. That's one thing that has afflicted us and that's one thing that continues to afflict us. We suffer the consequences of sin every day that we stay in this world. Are you guys with me so far? But here's the thing there. Let's go ahead and just remember Matthew chapter 5. If I have time, let me go ahead and just read. Uh, Actually, Matthew chapter 9 verses 1 to 8. If you guys remember this story, this is the story of Jesus Christ healing a paralytic man. You remember that one time, you remember that one time that he was inside a house. Tapos anong, anong nangyari po is, masyadong madaming tao doon, pero this, 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 this group of people, they wanted to reach Jesus so badly, so what did they do? Sinira po nila yung roof ng bahay, tapos binaba po nila yung paralytic na naka bed, sheets, and all. Hello? And what happened there? Let me go ahead and just read what it says here. And Jesus saw their faith, and he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, there were people around that area who were, who were not necessarily looking to Jesus to heal them. Pero inoobserbahan lang nila si Jesus. These were the scribes and these were the Pharisees who were just wanting to, they wanted to observe Jesus to see if he goes ahead and makes a mistake. And right there, they think they heard a mistake. Ano yung sinabi nila? This man, he blasphemes. Blasphemy. How could you go ahead and say that your sins are forgiven? 
But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? And take note of what the Lord Jesus Christ says here. He says here, But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then says to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. What are the points that I want to see, say here? Two points. First and foremost, the Lord Jesus Christ has the power not only to forgive sin, but to proclaim healing for each and every one of us. So Jesus forgives, Jesus can heal. But the second thing that we want to take note of here is this. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven before he said, rise, take up your bed and walk. What am I trying to say here, guys? Before we even try to heal our land, we need to heal ourselves. And before we even try to heal ourselves, let's go ahead and understand that the Lord Jesus Christ, by His finished work, has forgiven us of all of our sins. If you want to go ahead and feel healed, if you want to go ahead and just try to receive some healing, it starts off with you remembering now and forever that you are forgiven. You are forgiven, and therefore, you can receive the healing because the Lord Jesus Christ is capable not only of forgiving you, but of healing you as well. But it all starts with the forgiveness. Amen? So how did the Lord Jesus Christ heal our land? By forgiving our sins. But it doesn't stop there. Guys, are you with me so far? We have so much things to unpack here. Because what does it say? Once again, we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. What does it say there? He became sin in order for us to become His righteousness. So not only, friends, not only are our sins forgiven, but in place of sin, we have become the righteousness of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. So not only can we be so bold not only can we be so confident in saying that all of our sins are forgiven, but we can also be so confident in saying that I am righteous, not because of what I've done, but because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for each and every one of us. If there's anything I want any of you to remember today is that if you want to feel some healing, remember that you are forgiven. And friends, if you want to know how it is possible for Christ to hear each and every one of us, it's because he has made us righteous. How do I know this? Let's go ahead and read what it says here. Let's look at chapter 2. I mean, I'm sorry. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, first half of verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His eyes are upon you. Your sins are forgiven. You are righteous. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Therefore, the Lord is always looking out for you. And not only that, his eyes, his eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. So friends, whatever prayer that you have, any prayer, any words that you want to speak towards God, you can rest assured that our God who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent is able and willing to hear all of your prayer. God hears prayer, especially if you are righteous. And how have you been made righteous? through the Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is righteous, then therefore you are righteous. Therefore your sins are forgiven. And therefore whenever you call out to Him, you, know for, you can know for a fact that He hears you. You may not necessarily get what you pray for according to what you want, but rest assured knowing that the creator of the universe who knows everything that there is to know about every circumstance that you have, He hears you and He will respond with great power and great wisdom. Hello? The Lord God hears you. He hears your prayers. He hears your words, guys. And it doesn't stop there. You think I can go ahead and stop there? No. It goes on and it says in Romans chapter 8, verses 20, 26 to 27, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind, what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. 
What am I trying to say here? Even when we don't know what to pray for, it's the Holy Spirit that is alive in us that prays to God for us. You think that we know what to pray about in every situation? Some of us here are praying for Russia. Some of us here are praying for Ukraine. Some of us here are praying for vaccinated people. Some of us here are praying for unvaccinated people. Even that's a mess. But here's the thing. The Lord knows the spirit behind all of these prayers. And He is able to respond once again with His great power and with His great wisdom. So go ahead and pray. The Lord is able to read between the lines. And even if you don't have the power to pray, praise God. Because you have the power of the Holy Spirit praying with you. And He reads between the lines. God hears you. He has healed you because your sins have been forgiven. And He hears you because you have been made righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you guys getting something here so far? Let me go ahead and finish with this. In closing, it says here in 2 Chronicles, diba, ano yung, ano yung verse na sinabi natin? 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Hindi niyo po ba alam? May, seven, may, ver, may chapter 7, verse 15 and 16? Here's the thing. We try to stress verse 14, but no one ever points out verse 15 and 16. What does it say there? Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For, I, for now I have consecrated and chosen this house that my name would be there forever. Friends, because, the Lord, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, we can call ourselves temples of the Holy Spirit. You are temples of the Holy Spirit. And what does it say here? It says here that the name of God will be on your house, which is the name of God will be imprinted upon each and every one of you, both now and forever. What does it say in, in 1 Peter? It says that my eyes are upon you. My ears are listening to you. But it already says it here in these verses that my eyes are looking at you with love. My ears are listening to you. My, eyes, my ears are tuning into you. And I listen to your words and the words that you aren't saying. I'm reading between the lines and in each and every moment, I'm responding to you with love. I love you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Lord is telling to each and every one of us right now. For before we ever, because of Christ's finished work, we have verses like 2 Chronicles verse 7 to 14 to remind us of the extent of how we have been saved. For before we ever even sought God, bago po natin hinanap si Lord, it was Christ who humbled himself. It was Christ through his finished work, he took our sins away from us. And we can celebrate in spite of anything and everything happening in this world. For not only have our sins been forgiven, but we have been made righteous. And because we have been made righteous, the creator of the universe, who we are so bold now by the power of the Holy Spirit to call Father, He has His eyes and His ears and His heart for us and not against us at all times. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Cast all your cares upon Him. My friends, cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Heavenly Father, we praise and glorify You, and we thank You, O Lord Jesus Christ, for this timely word for this season. We thank You, O Lord Jesus Christ, that not only do You hear us, but Your eyes are upon us. You look upon us. You look at us. You hear us when we cry, O Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever my friends, my family, whatever everyone who is listening within the sound of my voice, whatever they're crying out to you for right now, O Lord Jesus Christ, I am thankful because you always hear us and you always see what's going on. You know, you know, O Lord Jesus Christ, more than we know for ourselves, whatever is going on in this world, whatever is going on in our country, whatever is going on in our city, whatever is going on in our families and in our personal lives, you know all that there is to know. And Lord Jesus Christ, what else can we do but to trust in you? Knowing that your finished work has you always looking at us, caring for us. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, as this month continues, I thank you that you continue to be with us. Keep us safe and protect us. Love us and cover us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now, before anything else, guys, before we go back to worshiping the Lord, let me just go ahead and bless each and every one of you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon each and every one of you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His shalom, His perfect shalom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. For all of you guys who want to give, the box is over there. And if you guys want to give, go ahead and give online. We're, we're flashing those details right now. God bless you guys. Let's worship the Lord. We hope to see you again next Sunday. Thank you so much. And